there, this is part of the Joe and C series, and today I'm out doing nature, and today I have found bloodroot. Now, and this is my little cheat note, so I can get things right, but I want to show you this. This here is the root. Look here. You see here, it looks like blood. So you can see it's called bloodroot. I want to tell you something. Look here. Looks like you got blood on your fingers. This here is what they make the black sap with, and they also use a toothpaste. They make with this and zinc and a couple other ingredients to help remove plaque in on the people's face. Now, here is the leaves here. You can see here, there's like kind of little different designs on them. Here, there's just a, a huge amount of these here, wonderful. Now, some people harvest these for different things. They make the sap, I said they make the black sap with it. Uh, you could add like plantain plant or some other plants like rosemary or thyme, whatever, to kind of help with it. Because you've got to be careful how much you use of this. Now, the thing is, is um, the reason it's called blood root, as you can see here, is because of the type of root. And uh, it was used, uh, it's also nicknamed, it's called war paint. Um, because the Indians used it in early, early culture. And then the nickname blood root came about because of the red sap that would bleed from the roots of the flower. Now, this here is what the flower looks like here. Even though it's late in the year, I just want to show it to you. So that's what the flower will look like. It will bloom among these here when the blooming goes. Now, this flower, of course, is located in eastern North America. And we're up here in Ohio, so it's up in this area here. Now, it is an anti-cancer property. That's why when you get black sap, Blood root is made into it. This here will help with skin cancer. They help remove warts and other things. But then again, you've got to be careful how long you leave it on the skin because it can be irritating. And you, if you've seen any of the videos showing the big holes that was left in the skin from the removal of the skin cancer, this can do the same thing. So you have to be extremely, extremely careful. Now, uh, there has been laboratory tests uh, to uh, treat tens of thousands of people over the last century and a half. And many of these, according to them, it says 80%, but it's probably a little bit higher than what they're really saying. Um, with different, similar conditions who choose different treatments. Now, the ability, the, because this ability to support healthy cells, uh, used, uh, John Barron used blood root in his blood cleaning formulas. Now, it's currently being studied further to determine its level of effect. Le the level it needs to be, sorry about that, my tongue trips. Uh, as a skin cancer treatment. Now, while the studies may not confirm it for, for this yet, blood root has been used for years to treat a variety of other skin conditions, including ringworms, skin tags, warts, polyps, and fungus growth. Um, Dr. Andrew Welch has recommended a powder or paste version of blood root for the removal of skin tags and moles. And again, like I said, you need to be careful Oh, I thought it was a squirrel attacking me. Uh, you need to be careful on how long you leave this on and everything. And please, I'm not a doctor, so you need to do research on this before you do anything and make a judgment call on your own. So, and it says it has antibiotic property, has led it to be approved by the FDA as a toothpaste ingredient. Now, the Ashgrad has been used to treat gingivitis and help with prevention and formulation of cavities, plaque, and tartar. Now, the Native Americans took notice of the plant ability to stimulate um, mucous membrane, membranes and uh, used blood root as a tea-based remedy for coughs and other respiratory conditions. Again, you need to check. If you're on medications, you got to be careful about this stuff because it can, some herbs will counteract with medications. So please do your research and be certain on it. Now, Blood root can also improve blood flow in the body and is believed to help prevent heart uh, complications and a variety of user, uh, uses for blood root has been reported on the WellMD website. So check it on WellMD website and see about blood root. And blood root is used to cause vomiting, empty the bowels, and reduce tooth pain. Now it's also used to treat uh, croup, hoarseness, and sore throat. Poor circulation in the surface blood vessels, nasal polyps, achy joints, and mucus, warts, and fever. Now, while the usage for this plant is wide, there is one 
thing you got to be careful about. A little can go a long way. Remember what I said, don't use much? This little bit here, I can use this quite a bit. For Like I said, just, just on that. Now, like I said, it's dried some. But this little bit here dry can go a very, very long way from treating gingivitis for your sore throats, making a tea and things. So you do not need a strong amount. Now, large doses, if causes nausea and vomiting, and even at low doses, it may have been reported to cause a peculiar side effects of some people, such as tunnel vision and pain in the feet. So if you do try this and you have a side effect to this or any of these problems, stop using it immediately like i said here you go i'm going to show you once again here uh, it, so there is like i said this is blood root right here there is people that do harvest it and you can learn a lot in nature walks here so like i said it's mostly used for a topical treatment but since it can cause burns after long-term use when applied directly to the skin or with successful application it is important to start slowly to determine how sensitive your skin is used to top us. Again, like I said, use this in a small amount. Do not overdo this and do not leave it on there for long periods of time. So this is part of the Joan Seed Series. This is Live Prepper here. Once you be safe, be happy. Bless y'all.